What's going on? Welcome to the New Music Business. I'm your host, Ari Herstand, author of How to Make It in the New Music Business, the book, third edition coming very soon. Today is my interview with Spotify, specifically Sam Duboff. He is the director and the head of creator brand and product marketing at Spotify. He's on the Spotify for Artists team. So he is working on the tools and the products day in and day out for artists directly. Now, this episode, we cover everything from Spotify editorial, how to get your songs on Spotify playlists, official ones, algorithmic playlists. We discuss all about what those are, how to get on them, how to stay on them, what the editors are looking for. We talk about the third-party playlists and services, what Spotify thinks about those. We talk about is press important. We talk about fraudulent and artificial streams and how to prevent those and what are bot streams and how that all works. We talk about getting in touch with your fans and all the tools that uh, are there or not there. We discuss credits, of course, and uh, what uh, Spotify is doing about the whole credit situation. So we touch on a lot of the topics that I know you're interested in because how do I know this? Well, I posted on Twitter and Instagram letting you know if you follow me there that I was interviewing Spotify and uh, asked you what to ask them. So I took detailed notes and I checked off. I had a checklist in front of me and I checked off all all the questions that you asked me to ask. And I I think I got through all of them. So which brings me to if you're not following me on Instagram or Twitter, you should because uh, I regularly ask you what I should ask my upcoming guests there. Now, this is a long interview and I would really encourage you to listen to the entire thing start to finish. Yes, it's longer than most, but come on, this is Spotify. This is the Spotify interview. So if you have to break it up into a few installments, uh, by all means, do it. I really encourage you to listen to the end. You're going to get a lot of great tips. Where else do you get to hear directly from the horse's mouth, directly from Spotify, directly on how you can be more successful and succeed on Spotify? Now, what we did not get into in this episode is the nuances of how the royalties are broken down. That would take far too long. Now, we did talk about payment. We talked about different various payment models, and we did talk about what Spotify thinks about how their payment structure works and if labels and distributors get paid more or less or any of that stuff. So we do cover it on the macro sense. But if you want to know the nitty gritty, the nuances of how songwriters are getting paid and how that works and if they're being paid enough and all of that, um, I actually did a full episode on this. It's called should artists boycott Spotify and go listen to that because I break down the royalty issue and how royalties work very explicitly on that episode. I believe it was back in February. So you can just search for that episode. If you want to know, I dedicated and devoted the entire episode to how royalties work on Spotify and all of that. All right. As always, please follow the show. If you're, is this your first time listening? Well, give us a follow, give us a like subscribe to this podcast however you're listening to it please give us a five-star review on spotify and apple Podcasts. however you're listening right now those really help if you're listening on youtube give us a comment i love reading those comments and give us a thumbs up you can follow everyone that makes the show happen at ari's take on tiktok twitter and instagram you can find me at ari herstand on instagram and twitter visit ari's take.com get on that email list that's where you're going to get the most up-to-date information about the new music business we send out regular emails there all things new music business practical tips everything that you need stay up to date ari's take.com get on that email list all right let's kick into the show sam Dubuff, welcome to the show hey so happy to be here yeah, I am uh, very excited for uh, this one today. You know, when I told my audience that I was interviewing Spotify on the show, as you can imagine, <laughs> I was like, so what questions do you have? And then uh, that was a famous last word as that my inbox will never recover from that, uh, <laughs> that request. My, but... <laughs> my inbox always looks that way. So I get it. It's fine. I'm ready for it. All right. Fantastic. So I have a bunch here waiting for you. But first off, before we get into all that, um, tell me what you do at Spotify. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've been at Spotify uh, about three and a half years, uh, mm-hmm. and I lead um, our uh, product marketing team for Spotify for Artists. So okay. um, we are the team that is helping to um, build, develop, market all the Spotify for Artists tools. Over a million artists use a month. Um, that is products for artists, and songwriters, labels, managers, uh, producers, kind of across the ecosystem. Um, mm-hmm. So a lot of our work is kind of making sure uh, artists get the most out of Spotify and Spotify for artists. And then mm-hmm. we also do a lot of kind of educational uh, initiatives to help explain the music industry, how it works, uh, mm-hmm. answer top questions from artists kind of on behalf of Spotify for artists as well. Amazing. And for those of you listening who have not explored Spotify for artists, 
artist.spotify.com. Go sign up if you haven't. Um, it's the it's the back end um, uh, kind of analytics platforms where you can see kind of real time stats of how your streams are doing, what playlists you've been added to, uh, you know, your follower growth, all of that stuff. It just uh, where top countries, top cities, all of that stuff. Yeah, and you know when I um, when I started, we were really uh, kind of narrowly focused on on analytics, and mm -hmm. still a, a ton of artists use this for primarily. But mm -hmm. um, we've really been adding a ton of new features in there uh, to go even beyond analytics. We want to be uh, the best place for artists to build a fan base. So there's promotional tools. You can add canvases. You can um, we're testing kind of live artist rooms where you can schedule kind of live audio rooms with your biggest fans. Um, so there's a bunch kind of stuff like in the, there now. The clubhouse knockoff. Uh, I, I wouldn't call spaces. it that. Yeah, definitely. You, will, you won't call it that. I can call it that. It's kind of like the the new <laughs> Fort. Right, right. I, lo I took a look at it, and it used to be called Green Room. I know, and and now it's uh, yeah. That's that's the hot new thing right now. It's like the so you don't have to be camera ready. It's like, it's like who wants to keep you know? I think we're so Zoom fatigued at this point. It's like yeah, that's why Twitter Spaces took off, and you know Clubhouse took yeah. off over the pandemic, and it's great to see that uh, Spotify Live um, is coming. It's not quite rolled out to everybody yet. Is that correct? Uh, Spotify Live is uh, anyone can kind of okay. download that from the App Store. The part we've been working on is um, kind of, we've been testing with a few dozen artists, uh, gotcha. live live artist rooms. So we'll get your okay. biggest music fans from Spotify mm -hmm. in the room with you. You can kind of upload a, a shop tab where you can put you know your merch, ticket links, collect tips, um, cool. uh, and we get your biggest fans there through uh, through our Fans First program in there for you. So that part's in limited testing, but. Mm -hmm. Anyone can go in and download Spotify Live now. So talk some a little bit more about the features other than the analytics, which I think, you know, uh, Spotify for Artists got known for initially because it is fantastic to be able to log in and see those real-time analytics. It's much more robust than any of the other distributors. I mean, I, you know, have studied uh, 17 uh, <laughs> distributors. I have a report, you know, comparing all of them. Like, I've done deep dives on all the distribution platforms and done the back end and, like, you know, it's nice to be able to go direct to Spotify for artists and see all of that info there. And I, you know, use it regularly for that. But talk to some of the other features, like you said, some fan engagement tools and ways that artists yeah. can use it to help their careers out. That's awesome to hear. Yeah, the stats are awesome. The one we always get the best feedback about is you can open the app anytime and see how many listeners around the world are listening to you at that exact moment, yeah. uh, <laughs> which is which is pretty awesome. That one, uh, that one's always fun. Um, yeah. We've got a bunch of tools uh, to help artists um, connect with fans. So mm -hmm. you can um, kind of uh, overhaul your artist profile, pin an artist pick on the top, artist playlist, mm -hmm. get your merch there, get your tickets there. Um, Canvas is super popular. Uh, you go into Spotify for Artists, go to any track, and you can upload a three to eight second looping visual. Um, mm -hmm. And people, you, you know, you've seen them on platform. Um, when you're playing the song, it'll kind of loop in the background. If a fan shares it to Instagram or Snapchat, um, mm -hmm. the canvas will kind of carry on there too. So you kind of yeah. get that feedback loop. Uh, so lots of cool ways to connect with fans. And then we've got a bunch of promotional features too. Um, so you can pitch uh, for free uh, to our playlist editors. Um, mm -hmm. Over the past two years, 150,000 artists uh, got playlisted for the first time, um, mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the playlist pitching tool. Um, and we're working on some new promotional tools too. We've got a product called Marquee um, mm -hmm. that is uh, a new release marketing tool. Um, mm -hmm. So you can kind of go in there when you have a new single EP or album going out, um, buy a campaign to target all different types of listeners based on Spotify uh, listing history, get mm -hmm. direct reporting on how it drove streams. Uh, so you can, and that's anyone in the US can do that through Spotify for Artists too. Cool. And I've seen that. I, I open my Spotify app and instantly an album from a new artist that I follow pops up. It's like, hey, someone's got a new art album out. You want to go check it out? And I can just tap right through and, and go listen to that album. That's the marquee feature you're talking about? Yeah, that's exactly right. Right. Cool. So you mentioned a lot of these things and, and um, a lot of these um, um, topics that you're you're you just touched on, we're going to dive deep into uh, because there's a part of all my questions. So first off, though, um, let's talk merch because you mentioned merch. Um, I have to say I am so appreciative and thankful that you switched to uh, Shopify integration with Spotify merch because <laughs> merch bar was a fucking nightmare. I have to tell you, like merch bar, I don't I don't know who they are, but I have emailed them. Uh, through their contact form or whatever over the last five years, probably a dozen times, you'd be like, hey guys, uh, you have an out of print CD 
listed for my merch. How can I change this? I literally have never received a response. I'd never been able to change it. And all the merch on my Spotify profile were these two out of print CDs that literally you would click through and it'd be like, this is out of stock. And it's like, yeah, I only made a thousand of them like 10 years ago. Why are you even listing this? I don't even have this album on Spotify anymore because it was a live album from so many years ago. I was like, it was such a nightmare. I was like, eventually I just gave up and was like, well, there's going to be some out of stock, out of print CDs that you won't even be able to listen to the album on, on my merch store. And that's it. So now you fixed that. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to hear it. Yeah. Shopify is awesome. They've been such good yeah. partners. Uh, yeah, we uh, um, we've been getting great feedback from them. Uh, uh, so I'm glad to hear you've enjoyed it. It's really great. It's so seamless. I just uh, honestly, on a, with an artist that I manage, uh, right before we hopped on, I was like, oh, we haven't put her. She's got a Shopify store going on. Let me just like, you know, plug it into spot her Spotify profile, and like within five minutes, it was up there. I was like, oh, that's easy. That's quick. Sweet. Amazing. That's okay. awesome to hear. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So merch is great. I appreciate that you've switched. That it's very easy now to do. Uh, the canvas videos, um, and I think everybody knows what that is. If you use Spotify, like you said, you you open, uh, you, you play a song, and if you have the song full screen, that's that looping little video that's playing there. Um, yeah. Do you have any data that says uh, why artists should use canvas videos? Because I have pushback from people, be like, I don't want a looping video. Like I put a lot of time and thought into my album cover, into that single cover, the album cover. Like that's a, that is part of my artwork. Like why do I have to come up with like some dumb little seven second video that doesn't have anything to do with the song? I don't really know what to do here. So it's like, tell me why somebody or should do canvas. Yeah. Lots of artists will kind of just keep their, their track artwork up there. And, and mm -hmm. that's great if they do. There's uh, several million canvases on platform now. Um, mm -hmm. and we kind of think of it as, uh, um, you know, album artwork for the streaming age, uh, rather okay. than having that static image, uh, you know, one of the things we've been trying to kind of improve about streaming is, um, especially with playlisting, sometimes, uh, every track can kind of look the same, um, mm -hmm. and artists miss that opportunity when a listener is coming in through a playlist to really stand mm -hmm. out, show who they are, show a bit of their vision behind the song. And so cool. Canvas gives them a little bit more um, opportunity for um, for creativity there to connect with a new fan. A listener might be mm -hmm. hearing you on a playlist for the very first time. They open their phone to see who you are and you you get that chance to show something a bit richer. Um, cool. But yeah, we've, we've released um, uh, a bunch of data um, on Canvas and um, the way we kind of look at it is uh, we'll look at um, comparing uh, listeners who open their phone and see the canvas, so it's not mm -hmm. in their pocket to actually look at the canvas, um, mm -hmm. versus when they open their phone and look at it and it's just track artwork, so the canvas mm -hmm. isn't there. Um, and on average, uh, listeners, when there is a canvas, they're 5% um, uh, more likely to keep streaming, 20% more likely to add you to a playlist, uh, and 9% more likely um, to visit your profile page. Um, and if so, you have a canvas video versus just the static track artwork. Exactly. That's wow. if you have a canvas and that's when they're looking wow. at it, um, okay. which is which is awesome. And of course, all those numbers, that's just on average. So it's got to be a good canvas. You have to um, you can't just kind of recut a music video where mm -hmm. uh, your lips are moving um, at the wrong time for the track right. on Spotify right. and assume you're going to get, the, you know, 20 percent lift in playlisting. Um, sure. But what we see now is, you know, when artists are um, on set for a music video, they'll do a bunch of takes that are just for canvas or mm. Um, yep. when they, you know, hire a designer, uh, or illustrator to take on their track artwork, um, they'll get a bunch of canvases for their album, um, yep. there at the same time. Um, and the social sharing is really cool too. So, mm -hmm. um, it really inspires fans to, uh, share to social. If they share to Instagram stories, Facebook stories, Snapchat, mm -hmm. the canvas goes with it. Um, and then, you know, when you see that story, it, uh, gets listeners to click right back into Spotify, listen to your track. So, yeah. um, uh, yeah, definitely kind of highly recommend uh, artists try it out. If you go to canvas.spotify.com, we have a site mm -hmm. where we took kind of 100 of the best canvases in different styles um, nice. to help inspire us. And you know, sometimes it might be footage of the artist. Sometimes it's a really cool 2D or 3D animation. Um, mm -hmm. Artists have been super creative about it. Cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, definitely check it out. Yeah, when I did my uh, album photo shoot last year, actually the photographer brought her assistant and his entire job was to shoot 
video in the locations of our photo shoots specifically for canvas videos and that's that was what he came to do and so it tied to the album so we had a few uh, we were releasing, I think, four singles, and each single had its own, you know, single artwork. And so the, it actually, the canvas video was very similar. It was almost like a motion. Uh, it was like a live action out track of artwork. Awesome. So it was in that same location, same setting, same scene, same vibe, except it was in motion. And so we had that. And then when you would tap the thing, you'd see the single covers like, oh, cool. This like really connects and relates. I love that. Yeah, one of the case studies um, uh, we love is... Uh, um, with Olivia Rodrigo's team for mm -hmm. driver's license, obviously the like rise of that song uh, um, is historic at this point. But um, one kind of key part of what she did was come up with kind of her own strategy for the canvas. And so it's kind of um, she said it was like Harry Potter inspired. You get three mm -hmm. driver's license uh, of her vertically, but on each one, her face is kind of animated in a different way. Um, and first week of uh, the song alone, it was shared to Instagram a quarter million times. Uh, and it was wow. viewed um, uh, over 50 million times uh, mm -hmm. over that period. And so like, it's just such a more compelling reason to, to share the song to social if you know there's gonna be a really fun, engaging video going with it. Um, totally. uh, so yeah, definitely lots of artists uh, using it in pretty cool ways. Amazing. So now uh, you mentioned promotional tools, and uh, you said that 150,000 artists have been playlisted for the first time in the last few years. Um, I think it was 2020 and 2021 are the, the data for that. Yeah. Um, amazing. Uh, we're gonna, I want to talk about promotion. Um, the number one question, as you can imagine, that I got and that everyone's wondering is how do you get on official Spotify editorial playlist? <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm gonna give you a personal anecdote and th okay. this is going to just um, guide our discussion about this because like, you know, I'm an artist as well. Um, I, uh, I've i listened and read, I, your, you, every video that you made for Spotify for artists and every article you've written, I want you to know I've read and I've watched. So I, I like, well done there. I love, I love but that. It's, <laughs> yeah, but it's not for my my lack of understanding on how all this works. So, yeah. you know, tell me what I did wrong and tell me <laughs> then what should be happening in the future because I'm going to just kind of like guide this a little bit. So let, let me set the scene. All right. So um, I've been, I've heard and I've read and I've told, you know, uh, want to be releasing music regularly let's warm up the you know warm up the algorithm warm everything up it's like okay cool so i'm going to release uh, a song every six weeks so i queued them all up and i uh as soon as, and i would distribute it um at least five weeks in advance of the release date so awesome. it'd give my distributor some time to get it to spotify so it'd show up in spotify usually about a month before release date so i'd go in right away into spotify for artists and i would pitch it now the pitch let me tell you these are work of arts i was like talking all <laughs> i told her the story behind the song you know but i also did the promotional strategy i hired a very expensive pr company we got amazing press you can see some of it behind me i got a big big profile on american songwriter magazine music connection amazing beautiful press like warmed my heart really stroked my ego really really nicely uh <laughs> they said some really <laughs> nice things about the album and about me and like you know that love the songs and there's just like beautiful reviews it was amazing so i like linked to some of them like hey like american song would have wrote about this and did this and you know and um let's just fast forward six months after i released uh you know four singles in advance then yep. the whole album i pitched it every single time i had all this press <laughs> i did all of this guess how many official spotify editorial playlists i got on I don't, I don't know how many. It's zero. It's zero. Yeah, so I, I'm I so like I, I'm you know <laughs> I feel and believe me I'm you've you've seen the, my TikTok videos you've seen my my um, articles like I'm a Spotify cheerleader I'm like you know what I was I, as soon as the Spotify launched you can go back to my digital music news articles from 2013 like I was the guy uh, you know <laughs> a, like fighting on behalf of streaming saying streaming is going to save the music industry streaming is the future stop trying to fight this like this is and it's streaming single-handedly has brought the music industry back from the death spiral it was in and you know it's yeah. the reason that the music industry is profitable again there's no Absolutely. argument there for me but it's heartbreaking and soul crushing to, <laughs> to like the one thing that all of us are just trying to do is like trying to figure out like what are you supposed to do yeah. to get on these coveted spotify detroit i thought i did everything right i'm telling you man it I sounds thought, like you did like, I, right so like break this shit down for me like what are we supposed to do all right let's <laughs> let's get into it first let me say that breaks my heart too it sounds like you did everything right it's a uh... 
uh, it's tough. I'll say, let's get into playlisting. We can, we can kind of talk it let's through. I will say like playlisting is our editorial playlists are amazing. As a listener, I'm listening to them all the time. A good playlist placement can, you know, break a song, make a career. Absolutely. Sometimes, mm-hmm. um, it becomes like, you know, such a singular focus, uh, for artists that, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, they lose track of the, all the other ways that they are going to be able to get their music out there on, on Spotify. And so, mm-hmm. you know, if you think of um, uh, algorithmic playlists uh, on Spotify, you know, Spotify mixes, Discover Weekly, Release Radar, um, Radio and Autoplay, a third of all new artist discoveries happen uh, in those personalized um, algorithmic sessions. Um, so and just, to, of, just to clarify for people that don't know what algorithmic playlists are, these are the ones that are not created by a human. This is not an editor at Spotify. This is the algorithm essentially making personalized playlists for each user. So my Discover Weekly playlist is going to look different from your Discover Weekly playlist because exactly. it's based on my listener habits and they recommend the algorithm recommends songs to me that I've never heard that they think I might enjoy. And that's what you're saying. A third of new artist discoveries happen <laughs> from these personalized algorithmic playlists. That's right. Right. And like the okay. reason um, playlists listing so important uh, for artists is that discovery moment, right? It's one of the mm-hmm. key places listeners go to find new music. A ton of that's happening in algorithmic playlists. And, um, uh, you know, you can see in Spotify for artists, for every song for you as an artist, what percentage of your streams are coming from, uh, you know, those algorithmic placements. But mm-hmm. that's a ton. The majority of uh, streaming on um, Spotify is what we call active streams. So that's, you know, outside of Spotify programming. And a, a listener listening to their own playlist, listening to their like songs, going to a catalog page like an EP or an album. Mm-hmm. Um, so I say all of that first, just to you know, um, uh, give heart to artists who kind of want that playlist placement, and it hasn't worked out yet. Um, Sounds Don't like get me wrong. I mean, right. and that's that's yeah. great to hear, and and that's important. Like, there is some algorithmic action that that you know happens in the back end and all of that stuff, and like you know, it's it's just. It's tough for a lot of artists, and I empathize, and I, you know, I, I have that musician's empathy. I am an artist, and I, and I go through this personally. It's just like right when I was just like, okay, um, and and it's you know, a hundred thousand streams is very different when there's zero editorial happening, and so like I, I don't know where my album's at now. It's uh, not quite at a million uh, streams, but hundreds of thousands of streams. And it's just like. Yeah. With zero editorial and very little algorithm, I'm like, oh, those are real fans that are listening. So it's like, it's nice, right. but it's like, yeah, I'm not going to get paid shit for that. So it's just like, okay, cool. Like my album's going to take me at this rate, probably, you know, 27 years to kind of like recoup the cost that I put it to invest in it. So like, I, I totally feel that. And the algorithm is real. I talk to artists all the time who show me their back end and they're like, yeah, dude, I, I'm getting 3 million streams a month just from Discover Weekly. And they show me this. Yeah, absolutely. Like, That's dope. And these artists similarly aren't on any uh, editorial. So like back to that, like I, I totally yeah, yeah, yeah. get and the algorithm is important too. Totally. Yeah, let's get into editorial. Uh, sounds like you were doing a lot of the the best practices. Um, okay. Keep, uh, playlist pitching um, through Spotify for artists definitely mm-hmm. is, is key. Um, you know, uh, at, at least seven days. Oh, at least seven said. days is what we mm-hmm. say. The ideal even two weeks in advance is, is even okay. better. Um, okay. But at least seven days, that'll make sure um, whatever kind of, if you're uh, doing an EP or an album, if you choose a focus uh, single through playlist pitching, mm-hmm. that will go on your followers release radar. If you do it at least seven days in advance, at least seven days will mean um, editors hopefully will get to it. Two weeks, even better. Um, Mm -hmm. Definitely make sure your your metadata is good. And then uh, that pitch, uh, editors really are are reading it. I was talking yesterday to our our head of uh, editorial, Selena, who's amazing, has a massive Mm -hmm. team. She's running the team of of global editors. And Mm -hmm. um, just the day before, she had been in our internal tool, reading artist pitches, reciting them to me verbatim, talking about music she discovered through it. Um, so they're, they're really listening. Um, and I think this data is, uh, you know, actually maybe a year or two old, but the last time we released data was uh, about 20% of uh, playlist pitches through Spotify for artists were added to at least one playlist of, of some mm-hmm. kind. Um, and so, yeah, in that pitch, you know, no need to detail like where you're touring or, you know, just publicity, get into the the heart of the song, um, uh, you know, story behind you as an artist, who are the collaborators you worked with, what's the song about, what's the stuff the editor should know that might help them place it uh, for the perfect audience. And, you know, there's uh, um, our flagship playlists, you know, Today's Stop Hits and Rap Caviar and Hot Country uh, are massive and really exciting. There's a whole ecosystem of, of playlists. Uh, and the more context you give, the more an editor could know that you could be a fit on 
an editorial workout playlist or a certain subgenre or a certain type mm. of influence. Um, our editors are um, really expert and immersed and well-versed in their genre and the cultures that they're curating for. And all the editors are, you know, using the editorial taste. Uh, there's always going to be that human touch. And then it's powered by Spotify data. So hopefully... Would you recommend... Uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, hopefully you get playlisted on um, uh, release day, but a lot of playlist ads happen post release. And that's mm. when um, editors are, you know, looking through all the data, seeing, you know, just the type of stuff you're talking about, you know, real fans are coming, streams per listener are high, people are adding this to their own playlist, mm -hmm. uh, the songs gaining momentum. Um, and so sometimes it happens release day, but often playlist ads are happening, especially for these smaller playlists that can have a big impact. Um, mm you know, weeks, even months, even years uh, after So that. let's talk about that for a second. I have a few questions with all of this, but um, I, it, it gives a lot of hope that if you don't get playlists on a release day that you could still get playlisted. How does that happen? What is signaling to these editors to take a second look if they may have passed the first time around or that it didn't get to it? Because you can't re-pitch a song once it's out. That's right, yeah. I mean, it's all the usual stuff you'd be looking for anyway to um, kind of build momentum on your track. Uh, they'll be looking at, um, you know, did the did you get a massive release day and then streams are um, kind of going down or did you have a massive release day and people are saving it, they're adding it, they're coming back to listening to it, mm. um, are listeners sharing it a bunch, um, you know, if it has some playlist placements already, is mm -hmm. the skip rate high, meaning it isn't working well in that playlist and mm. maybe it's not the right fit for that audience or okay. maybe it's, you know, being, uh, you know, saved uh, a ton by listeners and they're going to move it even higher up the playlist. Um, so the, the save rate, that's 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 my next question. Um, how important are pre-saves? I know that Spotify doesn't have a native way to actually do pre-saves, which is my follow-up question is, <laughs> are you going to have a an in-app way for artists to pre-save so you don't have to jump through 27 hoops when you try to go from Instagram and you have to log in 12 times yep, and then yep, you yep. get the da, 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 it's like a nightmare. But are you gonna do an in-app uh, way to pre-save and are pre is pre-saving worthwhile? Does it do anything? Yeah, as you said, there's no officially supported Spotify pre-save. So any mm -hmm. pre-save um, services an artist is using, that's a developer using the Spotify API to kind of um, hack it together. I've seen some of them work really well. I've seen some uh, not work well, but it's, it's, it's not going to impact playlisting because, um, uh, you know, that's all done by a third-party developer. Uh, we won't see a number of pre-saves. If your pre-save campaign leads to a really big release day, you know maybe that will help you kind of stand out okay. on platform. But um, uh, you know all those pre-save services are are happening off Spotify and just plugging into our, our API. But it turns into saves. And when you you said you look at the save rate, so if like if I get ten thousand people, unlikely, but ten thousand people to pre-save uh, my single. And you see week one, it's like, holy shit, this song has 10,000 saves in just a few days. That does well, something, right? Yeah, it does something. Okay. There, I've, I've seen tracks where the day one saves will be way beyond day one streams. And so when right. we see that, that you know, if, that if the, the saves aren't leading to streaming, um, uh, that's, mm -hmm. you know, um, only going to do so much for you. The reason okay. you want pre-saves is because it's going to get your biggest fans into mm -hmm. um uh, into your new release as soon as it comes out. And if they're following you on Spotify, it'll go in the release radar. You know, artists are doing a great job on social, getting their big fans into new releases. Um, and pre-saves can be, can be really useful if you're not just getting, you know, casual listeners to go through a pre-save flow because there's a prize at the end, but because you're getting people most excited for your music to mm. um, pre-save it so they go back and listen to it. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we, we just started testing... Um, a pre-release page. Uh, you may have seen it on platform. Florence and the Machine was the the first artist to use it, and um, nice. uh, it's an early, early test. And so um, we definitely have nothing to announce, but we know there's that kind of pre-release hype uh, yeah. need for artists is bigger than ever. Um, yeah. And it's something we're exploring. Uh, um, uh, we had, you know, Florence's page had a few videos where she got to share what was becoming uh, cool. on the album. Um, you could uh, pre-save it and then. There was a push notification and a little banner on home when the, the album came out. Uh, so we'll, we'll see if listeners are you know, responding to it. We'll see the feedback we get from artists, like all mm -hmm. of our tests. But mm -hmm. um, I was really excited to see it because, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, yeah. Pre-save and pre-release uh, is a really cool opportunity. Cool. That's super helpful. And I, and I hope it does uh, release. And I hope it's a, a free tool for artists. Uh, do you think it will be free or do you think it's going to be a paid promotional tool? 
Yeah, I, I honestly couldn't say we uh, we're, we're okay. one test in, but um, sure. yeah, I, I, that that would be a uh, um, good opportunity. A free tool. Yeah, right. absolutely. Uh, okay. Um, and you mentioned followers also. Um, how important are followers, and what is the purpose of artists gaining followers? Um, followers are a way for listeners to say, um, you know, I want to know everything this artist is up to on Spotify. Mm -hmm. um, they follow you from your artist profile. There's a few other places they can follow you. Um, and it does a few things. First, it means every new release um, will 100% uh, certainty hit their release radar. Um, when that updates, uh, you know, if you follow uh, any artist, every new release, you know it'll be in the release radar. Release radar mm -hmm. is super popular um, mm -hmm. with music fans. We also have a feed called um, What's New. That um, it's like the bell icon you can see at the top of your Spotify. Mm -hmm. And that is just a uh, you know, timeline that shows you every artist you follow, um, uh, every release that came out from them. Uh, we're also testing, you know, could we bring merch into that? Could we bring tickets into um, that What's yeah. New feed? You know, how could that be a place where you go to find out everything going going on for all the artists you follow? Um, and also follows a big signal to all of our personalization tech. So if you know those emails that um, listeners get recommending concerts near them, uh, when we, you know, um, our system looks at what song should be placed in um, algorithmic playlists like Discover Weekly. Uh, if a listener is following you, it's a mm -hmm. really big signal to our system that they love your music. They want to hear more of it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, driving followers is, is great for an artist. Um, yeah. uh, and you can, um, uh, you know, always follow, uh, see how many followers you're getting in Spotify for artists and, and track right. it that way too. So. Uh, you know, I, I know about the Spotify emails that say this artist is coming to town and that's great, but is there a way that artists have any control over what messaging is sent to their fans and more so, um, how do I get in touch with the people that said, I want to follow you and how do I send them a message? Like on Bandcamp, for instance, Anyone who's ever purchased anything from me on Bandcamp, not only do I get their emails, but I can send a message. It's like a full, it's really easy and quick. I just like type in a message and boom, it sends it to everyone who's ever bought something from me. Can yeah. I get that feature for followers? Can I just like, you know, we got 100,000 followers on Spotify. Can I just like send a message and be like, That's hey guys, come on, going on tour, check out tickets right here. Like, when can I do that? Th that'd be awesome. Uh, yeah, we, we uh, um, <laughs> very much like you know if someone's following you on spotify it's it's for the music and um hopefully they're following you on lots of other social platforms where you can um uh kind of keep them up to date on everything you're doing mm -hmm. uh you know if they're following you they're gonna always get your new releases it's gonna be in the release radar it'll be in the what's new feed it'll be you know higher uh in recommendations um and hopefully they're visiting your artist profile too where you can make an artist playlist that curates everything get your merch there get your tickets get you know, a tipping link. Uh, you can do an artist pick at the top, spotlighting the main thing you want them to to check out. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really excited about the uh, live audio rooms test we talked about at the beginning. Mm -hmm. For that reason, it's like mm -hmm. you know one of the the first times artists are able to um, you know talk live to their biggest music fans um, yeah. through Spotify. So and that's cool. Yeah, and I saw the case study with Elohim, that. and that looked that looked nice. And like she said, you know, uh, you know, a hundred some uh, super fans were in that room with her, and she get to talk up the the yeah. song, the release when it came out, and that that's great. But with someone like her, who's got I don't know one to two million monthly listeners, and you got a hundred people, and it's like sweet, you can engage your super fans, which is awesome. But how do you engage all the other people, like the hundred thousand people that ch clicked? I want to follow this artist, and you know, and there's that's where the yeah. disconnect I think is like we don't have a way to get to 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 communicate with our listeners, or even our active listeners, even the people that just click the button. I want to follow this artist. Like, how do you, yeah. like, you know, how do we get more in touch with them? Yeah, I know that um, you know turning a listener into a fan is definitely you know if not the biggest challenge for an artist. Now it's up there, yeah. um, and it's always for us. We're trying to offer as many tools as possible to um, give artists cool ways to, to connect yeah. with new listeners, you know, new fans, mm -hmm. their biggest fans. Um, and then, you know, we're trying to balance that with if, if you're a listener, how do we make sure we're protecting that listener experience where you're not, um, you know, getting emails from uh, all the artists you love uh, all sure. the time. And that balance is something we're always working on. We're definitely developing um, some cool ways that let artists, you know, bring their, their whole self to the platform. So, you know, stuff like uh, Canvas, um, new artist profile tools, 
these live experiences. Uh, so we're definitely planning to do more in that space because I hear you. It's a, mm-hmm. a place we want to do a lot more. I want to get back to uh, getting added to uh, editorial. Um, other than submitting through the Spotify for Artists, or in addition to that, what else should artists be doing to help their chances at get it added to the playlist? And like you're talking to the head of, you know, head of Selena yesterday, head of playlist, what does she say she likes to see in a pitch? Um, what what else should artists be doing outside of just that that pitching tool? Yeah, you know, I don't think there's any uh, um, silver bullet, sadly. Um, uh, definitely uh, following all those best practices around pitching early. Um, the metadata is all really key, as you know. You've done a lot of really great uh, content materials about the importance of of that metadata being in there. In the pitch itself, um, the uh, you're really focusing on on the story of the song um, and some of that kind of extra context that won't come through in, in the recording itself. Um, promotional plan is always nice. That's cool to see. Um, not always as important. We definitely get a lot of that, you know, uh, tour dates and publicity. Nice. That can Do be you a, care uh, about press? But less so. I, 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 you know, certainly artists can include it and it's a good sign of momentum you're getting. Um, for our editors, especially, um, uh, um, you know, so many editors around the world are so immersed in, um, Kind of music culture they're, they're seeing press they're um, following everything on social they want to know the story of the song um, and one of those elements uh, that can only come through through you know you explaining it um, mm-hmm. as an artist uh, so I'd say you know upfront they're um, it's all about uh, you know that pitching process we give the same process the biggest artists of the world and the um, you know a new artist uh, just starting out or using the same tool it goes into our system the same way um, and our editors really are going through. Um, all that music, as, as crazy as that sounds. Um, I gotta, I gotta then, pause right there for a second. Yeah. Hold on. You're saying that it's the same tool that major label artists use, or major labels are using as DIY self-release independent artists. It's they have the same That's, Spotify pitching tool in Spotify for artists. Exactly the same. And uh, so in Spotify for artists, you can add members to your team. So if you have a, a manager, a label rep, they all go in the same kind of artist team. So it's you know mm-hmm. one. Uh, uh, one artist on Spotify for artists, anyone on your team with the right permission level can pitch for you. So, you know, if you're a signed artist, you might ask your label to pitch for you. Mm-hmm. If you're, um, even for signed artists, sometimes the artists will pitch themselves. Managers sometimes will pitch anyone with the right permission. Spotify for artists pitches go to the exact same place, exact same tool. Um, no matter, no matter how big or small an artist you are. Do editors, uh, prioritize pitches that come from labels versus artists themselves? No, definitely not. Um, you know, mm. they we uh, you can see which user submitted it to put context. Even just like if someone's using first person or third person, we need it to to make sense. But um, yeah, sometimes it's really cool. You'll see some of the biggest artists in the world will be um, pitching themselves. Uh, there's definitely no downside to having a manager or a label rep do it. Artists have plenty going on. They don't need to be um, uh, you know go, going into pitch or playlists if they don't want to. Um, really up to the artist, but uh, it's the exact same tool, whether you're a label manager or artist, you're using the exact same tool and same process. On, and on our side for our editor tools, um, uh, it, it looks exactly the same. Um, and so, uh, yeah, biggest artists in the world and DIY artists just starting out, um, all pitching through Spotify for artists in the same way. Step me through the back end and the editor's process. When they get these pitches coming through, how are they filtered and segmented to the appropriate editors? And how are they reviewing them? I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, that any song that comes from a major label as the top of priority and only if they have time, they're going to get to the indies because it seems like <laughs> there is guaranteed placement for every major label song, at least from my vantage point. And it's a real shot in the dark if an indie artist is going to get it. So step me through how this segmentation filtering process works, who, get, which editors are getting which songs, how does that work? And yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know the um, really nitty gritty uh, details of how the, how the editors work, but um, okay. there's definitely filters about, like audience size. And so, um, you know, the bigger an audience an, an artist has, um, uh, that's, you know, one signal they might look at. Um, uh, they'll look at genre, they'll look at, um, you know, if an artist has been playlisted in a certain genre before, um, an editor in that genre will be kind of keyed into them. Um, and our team, you know, offers a bunch of data in the, the editor tools. And so they'll be looking at all those kind of stats we talked about, you know, save rate and skip rate and uh how a song is is tracking um Mm -hmm. but no yeah there's no kind of toggle or filter based on 
what label they're on. Uh, but yeah, for sure, you know, an artist with a bigger audience size, um, that's going to be one of the the kind of signals uh, editors will be using to um, sift through all the music that they listen to. Well, I'm I'm confused because I see major label artists all the time come out with their very first single and it gets a boatload of playlists before this traction anywhere else. It's not like they got a TikTok viral hit. It's just like, boom, day one, bunch of playlist inclusion. Uh, and then I see indie artists that, you know, like me or others that have great history, traction, lots of saves, lots of followers, blah, 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 blah. all the things that you just mentioned don't get playlist inclusion. So I, like really give me the real thing here. Like you're do, I guess I'm going to ask the question again, do yeah. major label artists get guaranteed inclusion period? No. Yeah. I, uh, I wish I had even more details on uh, uh, the day-to-day -day editor process for you, but okay. um, definitely not. I, t I hear you. Um, <laughs> you know, we look at, uh, I know people are watching the biggest playlist, uh, um, eagle-eyed um, uh, for sure. And, um, you know, we're looking at the entire playlist ecosystem and 150,000 artists playlisted the first time over the last two years. And um, that's- How many of those artists were on labels? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, don't uh, I don't okay. know if it, but certainly at that, uh, magnitude of 150,000 artists um, uh, we're likely talking majority um, independently distributed um, and yeah it's a uh, um, I there's a whole wide set of, uh, of playlists and um, so many of uh, you know lorem and a lot of the top uh, playlists that are, are really growing fast um, mm -hmm. uh, our fresh finds ecosystem that really focuses uh, I think you know there's like 20 even 30 fresh finds playlists now broken down mm -hmm. by genres and by markets and those playlists are really popular and, and just focused on um, the independent sector and kind of helping discover um, independent acts. And so mm -hmm. we look at that ecosystem as a whole. We're investing a ton in programs like Fresh Finds. We have a artist development program within the Fresh Finds playlist as well, where we take um, a handful of artists you know, each quarter and kind of um, guide them through the Spotify ecosystem, um, mm -hmm. give them some marketing support. Uh, we cool. set them up with, um, uh, producers through our kind of notable uh, sub brand for for songwriters and producers, and they have to release a Spotify single at the end of the program. Um, cool. So there's a wide range of playlists. How uh, do artists get involved in that program, in the Fresh Finds program? Um, starts with the Fresh Finds editors. Um, and so oh. I know that's a frustrating, cool. but yeah, no, no pitching process for that. Um, Fresh okay. Finds editors are um, awesome. They're really just looking um, at kind of new music from independent artists. They're finding ones they think have a ton of potential um, super early in their career. Um, and uh yeah the program's been great it's um uh cool. i think we're three or four quarters into it how many songs get uploaded to spotify every day um great question i don't know off the top of my head but te tens of thousands okay i know the last number like a year and a half ago was sixty thousand, and then i was at uh south by uh just a few months ago this past march in 2022 and i heard uh will page said it was uh 80,000. I don't know if that he was just throwing that number out. I was trying to get some kind of clarity on this, but you don't know. You know, okay. Will, Will Page usually knows what he's talking about. Uh, I figured, I, but okay. Yeah, so, all right, well, let's I, I, just say it's somewhere between 60,000 and 80,000 songs a day. Um, there's, there's no humanly possible way that an editor can review every song. Uh, I, I guess maybe, do you know this? What's the percentage of songs that get released that get actually pitched to editors? Yeah, I'm not sure. Certainly not okay. tens of thousands a day. Um, it's okay. a, um, yeah, that number is all sorts of of tracks. It's definitely a, a much much smaller set that um, uh, are getting pitched get to pitched. Spotify for artists. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. So let's talk personalize the algorithmic playlist that you mentioned before. Um, how can an artist increase their chances of getting added to these personalized playlists like Discover Weekly? Um, we talked about Release Radar, just get followers. That's 100% chance. You know, if you submit to Spotify for artists to the editors in the back end at least seven days in advance, you're going to get added to Release Radar. Yeah. That's yeah. great. But let's talk about the other ones, uh, the Daily Mixes, the, you know, Made For Yous, uh, the, the Discover Weeklies, all of that kind of stuff, all yeah. the algorithmic playlists. Um, how do songs get added and how do they stay on? Yeah, um, we have a, a new site I'll promo quickly. Uh, we launched a few months ago called Made to be Found. Um, you mm -hmm. can just uh, Google and these sets of questions are um, uh, definitely like top five um, we get around how do I tap into these personalized sessions. And so we try mm -hmm. to break it down. Um, we kind of go through all the different kind of sources of discovery on Spotify and list, you know, 
20 of the many signals that are going into personalization. But yeah, diving into that kind of um, the algorithmic sets, there's three different categories. You've got um, personalized editorial mm -hmm. playlists, you have algorithmic playlists, and then you have radio and autoplay. Um, and each one's a bit different. Uh, again, together, those are the ones that drive about a third of new artist discoveries. For personalized editorial, that's um, things like you know beast mode and songs to sing in the shower and happy hits, where based on what genres you like as a, a listener, you might listen to a different song in the shower than than I might. Um, for for all those uh, um, playlists, um, a kind of really large pool is um, curated by an editor. That's through the playlist pitching process uh, still, and then from that really wide set, they'll. Um, um, our system will kind of personalize the order based on mm. the types of music you like as a listener. Um, and so, you know, that's one of the reasons it's great to provide as much detail as you can in the pitch to our editors, because for a lot of those personalized editorial playlists, um, you know, they're uh, really about moods and moments and genres. And um, you can give that extra detail to help the editor place it there. Um, mm -hmm. If you get on a personalized editorial playlist, you can get a, um, we call it a unique link in Spotify for Artists, um, where if you share that link on social, it'll pin your song to the top of that playlist uh, for anyone who clicks it. Because um, oh. sometimes you'll, you know, you'll get on happy hits, you'll want to sure. share it, but it's going to look different for every listener. Um, yeah. If you use that unique link, you kind of get pinned there at the top. Mm -hmm. um, for algorithmic playlists, you know, that's stuff like, uh, you mentioned a bunch of them, Discover Weekly, Spotify Mixes, uh, Blend is a new one um, mm -hmm. we recently launched. Uh, can be different for uh, for all them. Metadata is really critical across all of it because that. And when you say metadata, of... that is explain what you mean by metadata. Um, you know the uh, collaborators. You can identify um, three genres um, that kind of can help you a signal for uh, um, what types of listeners might like it. Um, you know, uh, you can get ad lyrics through your distributor, music match. Mm -hmm. You can, um, you know, make sure you're adding uh, your song credits. Uh, all that information, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the dur duration of the song, um, all that information kind of uh, adds additional um, signals to, to kind of help us, um, to help our system know where to place it. Okay. Um, all that can make a big difference. And then, yeah, for uh, different playlists, there's different ways to really optimize your chances there. Release Radar is one we've already talked about. Um, if you can get, uh, you know, encourage your fans to follow you, you'll make sure you get into that Release Radar. Um, across the board for, uh, you know, all these um, algorithmic playlists, our system's looking at all the same sorts of signals that you'd be looking for as an artist for momentum, right? Like if the song is really connecting with listeners, if that save rate's high, if it's being added to playlists, um, if uh, the streams per listener are high, right? If, you know, someone puts you on repeat rather than just listening once and moving on. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, all the things you're trying to do as an artist anyway, get fans into your work and excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, that all feeds back into the system. So our algorithms can make even better recommendations to listeners. Cool. Um, and you mentioned uh, a few things. That, now, how do you stay on these? Because I've heard of artists that say that they had a song in radio for a while and then it got bumped. Uh, it's like I was on Twitter I was, when I asked, like, I'm going to interview Spotify. What's the question? She's like, man, she's a piano instrumental artist. Um, yeah. She's like, I was getting 20,000 streams a day from radio and for 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 years, months, you know, and she's like, and then it just dropped the last few months down to about 3000 streams a day in radio. She's like, I didn't I don't know what happened. Like, can you explain that or what's going on there? How do how do songs get removed or bumped from these algorithmic playlists? Yeah, super interesting. Um, it, yeah, sh it shouldn't be happening. Um, uh, it's much more of a sliding scale than that. Um, so if you're looking at like a personalized editorial playlist, if a song really wasn't connecting well with listeners on it, it might be, mm -hmm. you know, um, removed over time um, yeah. by an editor. But for any other algorithmic set, um, it's really going to be a sliding scale. It's not that you're on it or you're not on it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, based on how your song's performing and um, the kind of data signals that um, our algorithms are getting back. Uh, right. It might kind of uh, go up, go down. I know that can be kind of uh, frustrating if you can't figure out the reason, but mm -hmm. yeah, definitely it shouldn't be going from, you know, a ton of streams to, to very few. Um, it doesn't kind of leave radio, uh, anything like that. 
Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm cur- I I don't know what to tell her, but they, yeah, she was showing me the data. I was like, man, <laughs> I'll ask them, but I don't know. All right. So you that mentioned getting rough. added. Yeah, getting added to uh, playlists, uh, like user playlists, like, like listeners adding your song to their own playlist is a way is like signal yeah. that gets sent. And right, that's something important. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that's obviously a, a, a huge uh, part of the Spotify ecosystem tons of um, user playlists. Some people just have a private playlist that they use to sort their music. And then there's some really mm-hmm. popular public playlists. Um, uh, I'm sure you know a bunch uh, where Well, I have users one. And kind of, oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I have my low volume funk playlist. I think we're at like 55 or 60,000 followers on that. And and it's like the number one driver of my funk band, uh, Brassroots District. It's like the number oh. we're I mean, we're on thousands That's of awesome. playlists, user playlists. You, uh, you have that. Uh, you have it listed as an artist playlist on your profile, yeah. too. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's public. It's right there. It's an artist profile. And I, you know, I like I'm a big funk fan, too. So I would just add songs. Yeah. Um, and I would share it in like, my, like, you know, private, like funk Facebook groups that I was in and people would be like, Oh, this is great. Thanks so much. You know, I, I got a bunch of followers that way. And so, but, but this brings me to my next point about the whole ecosystem of user generated playlists. And there is a whole business model here because you just said it yourself that when people add you to their user playlists, that sends signals to Spotify that uh, will react to the algorithmic playlist, which eventually theoretically will react to the editors, which is the whole, you know, get you on the thing. So artists are listening and their their mindset is, oh, I need to get added to more user-generated playlists, especially if they're active. Like, you know, my mine, Low Volume Funk with 60,000 followers, not just followers, I mean, there's listeners. Like, I'm getting thousands and thousands of listeners every month, my funk band, because this playlist is active. Um, so it's to people's benefit. I get DM'd all the time. Hey, I got this new song. Will you add me to low volume funk? And I'll listen. If I dig it, I'll add it. Why not? Um, you know, help them out. And, um, but now we go one layer deeper and I know this is against the terms and, and I report it when it happens, but like people who run one run popular playlists, uh, know this and they know that artists are trying to find any way in. And so, you know, some playlisters, uh, when they get sent the DM, hey, will you add my song to your playlist? They'd be like, yeah, 25 bucks, and I'll add you. That's against the terms, correct? Absolutely. Against yeah. the terms, yeah. Okay, so that happens. And I you know, I try to tell people, like, don't do that. And if it does, you know, and, and when I get emails from people saying, hey, here, you can pay me 150 bucks or do that, whatever, and I'll add you. I'll forward that to Spotify support so they can take those playlists down. Because I know that's against the thank, terms. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, totally. And everyone should report those. But... But now we get into this gray area of the third party services like a playlist push, like Submit Hub, where they're not technically charging you for playlist inclusion. They're mm. charging you for consideration. And that is, I think, where this gray area is like, we're not breaking Spotify's terms because like we're not guaranteeing you in the inclusion. It's just consideration. So, like, you know, but they're charging playlist push is charging thousands of dollars a campaign. For you to listen to it, submit hub. You know the the actual playlisters will get a few bucks per listen on that. Mm. What do you think about these kinds of third party services? I I don't know uh, enough about about either of those to um, comment on them. In general, you know any service that's helping artists grow their audience authentically, we support. That's great. Um, yeah, that that gray area is where. Um, things can be tough and, um, uh, you know, it gets into, um, real questions of, uh, you know, are the playlists you're being added to, um, really popular listeners is driving real streams. Um, you know, anytime, uh, an editor's, uh, you know, a user is, um, charging money to be added to a playlist that's against our terms of services, that's going to come back to bite you because it'll be taken down over time. Um, the streams will be, um, kind of removed from your stream count and, and so on. And so you're always going to want to avoid that. Um, but, uh, um, you know, if it's a real user playlist with a real following, that's going to show in the data. Um, a lot of user um, curators are are great. Um, and, you know, if it's a service that's authentic, that helps you develop your, your music and get you out there, um, that's awesome. It definitely um, is a tough ecosystem out there. You know, we see all the uh, services that are, you know, advertising on Instagram or um, dropping into to artist DMs, and they'll present themselves as, um, you know, an authentic uh, marketing service. But 
uh, actually, you know, it might be um, uh, a service using artificial streaming um, where it's not driving actual user intent. Um, what is artificial you might get streaming? Well. What does that mean? Um, so artificial streaming is, you know, um, any stream that doesn't reflect genuine um, user listening intent. And that also means any instance of um, attempting to manipulate Spotify with automated processes. So, you know, bots, uh, scripts attempt to, you know, manipulate Spotify charts. Mm. Um, and uh, we have a huge team at Spotify who's investing a ton in um, uh, technology to help identify and, and take down artificial streaming. Um, and, you know, if uh, artists engages in, in artificial streaming, there's a, a sliding scale of of actions that can take place, you know, from correcting the streaming and chart numbers, withholding royalties, sometimes even having to remove the manipulated track. And what's really tough is, you know, sometimes an artist might um, uh, realize that's what um, the service is engaging in. And I think that's a really small minority of the cases. Often they think they're, um, you know, buying a legit service. And it yeah. so turns out that um, what the service is doing on the back end is uh, engaging in artificial streaming. And that's an issue that um, uh, really breaks my heart. And um, artificial streaming in general is uh, such an important issue to Davern in the industry because it doesn't just affect that one artist or that one song. If an artist gets away with artificial streaming, um, that takes you know money from the royalty pool that should go to one artist for real listening and, and shifts it to someone who didn't earn it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's really tough. So when you know um, we can kind of talk through some of the things artists can do. Uh, before buying a service to try to kind of research it. There's some Let's things you can do. Yeah, um, you know, uh, there's a few things you can do kind of before you buy a service to try to kind of vet it. And then there's a few things you can do right after um, okay. uh, you kind of buy a service before. Um, and uh, I wish there was an even cleaner answer. Uh, really do your research. Google a bunch um, and Reddit and forums and artist forums are particularly good there. A lot of services might uh, change their name um, once we started and other streaming services have started to take down um, uh, you know their tracks they'll they'll change their name a lot of uh, artists do um, a great job of kind of sharing those stories after the fact um, mm -hmm. so go deep on Google really try to make sure this is a legit service if you mm -hmm. can talk to other artists who have used it before um, mm -hmm. and can kind of speak to what the services that you're buying mm -hmm. um, after you buy it Spotify for artists can kind of help you um, quickly make sure that there's nothing um, fishy going on. So uh, if you look at the you know track that's getting promoted in the source of streams data, um, do you see a big number of streams coming in the other category that you can't really explain? You know, usually the majority of your streams will be in, you know, uh, profile and catalog or listeners own playlists. There's an mm -hmm. other category. Um, if that's looking high, um, that might kind of raise a question what for you. What does other category mean? I'm not familiar. Um, I, you know, I bet it's like, you know, streams through, um, uh, like our API services. It's kind of any sort of, um, uh, um, uh, kind of a catch all for, it's usually a really small percentage of your total streams. Um, okay. Okay. that's kind of like a catch, -all, like, you know, if, if a developer builds, you know, a cool service where you can play Spotify songs mm, through some website it. it might show up in other that sort of thing so got yeah okay. you know that usually should be small suddenly you're seeing a huge spike in other mm -hmm. something's up if you expect you know um if you see a huge spike of streams you're not expecting like you might expect mm -hmm. a playlist ad or a new release um uh spiking streams if it's kind of um, all happening in a random wednesday and then it goes back down the next day um or really if there's a, a big spike in any one category that'd be a, a sign to look for mm -hmm. um and definitely look at your streaming cities too um, often if it's artificial streaming, you know, it might be, uh, specific cities that don't really make sense to you are suddenly your top city for the song. Um, if you're noticing anything suspicious in Spotify for artists, reach out to your distributor right away where our team's in touch with, um, uh, distributors kind of mm -hmm. all the time around artificial streaming enforcement. And, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're an artist and, uh, you know, you thought you were kind of buying an authentic, you know, development service. Um, and you're noticing saying you're a Spotify for artists, you know, right away, let your distributor know. Um, and they're in touch with our artificial streaming team. And, um, you know, it, uh, I'm sure there's sometimes um, uh, where it can be, you know, tough to get the right contact. And um, I've heard lots of horror stories from artists where they didn't um, uh, intend to happen or, you know, saying it was flagged as artificial streaming and, that it, you know, it, it wasn't. Um, and, uh, you know, those sorts of issues. Um, 
uh, we definitely never want to see. Yeah. You say get in touch with your distributor. Uh, now, I have talked to friends and people who've, who've realized this after the fact. Uh, they thought they were hiring a playlist plugger, essentially somebody with contact, you know, essentially a, P, a publicist for playlists is like a big thing out there. And then it turns out it, they're, they it look like bot streams. So they got yep. in touch with the distributor and the distributor's like, oh, you're dead to us. They essentially booted the artist from the distribution and then ki- took down the album and then blocked all their streams. So like, oh, get in touch with the distributor. Oh, it happens all the time. So like, yeah. I... I have to push back on the get in touch with the distributor because if you do get in touch with the distributor, your distributor distributors don't. I'm sorry, they don't care really. Most of them about the artist, they care about the relationship with Spotify. They are all the distributors are terrified that they're going to get downgraded from Spotify, saying, "Oh, you allow fraudulent streaming activity on your songs, and so we're going to punish you." So in return, all the distributors punish the artist, and the artists are like. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do to promote my music. You told me that I should be prioritizing Spotify. So I hired, spent a lot of money on somebody that said that they were going to be pitching me to legitimate playlists, no bot activity at all. And now the artist is fucked. Man, yeah, I hate hearing stuff like that. Um, artificial streaming um, is such a tough issue because on the, on the flip side, um, you know, I think years ago, artificial streaming was such a... Um, kind of like prevalent uh, issue on streaming services. And that's why we, and I know a lot of other streaming services have invested so much in it because um, there is a lot of that activity that had been going on. And um, mm-hmm. I uh, think it's really been ramped down a ton. And again, that's all, um, you know, artificial streams that uh, are left on the platform that takes money from the royalty pool away from artists who deserve it to, yeah. um, to music that doesn't. And any system like that, when we're talking about the scale of any of these streaming services, it's really tough. So um, that mm-hmm. shouldn't be what distributors are communicating back to artists. And um, that, that's tough to hear. I hate hearing that story. I um, wish it was different. It's a, it's but a really I, tough I've, issue. It's not just one distributor. I, like, I've, I've documented this from virtually every distributor out there. And that's that's and I've talked to distributors directly too. I'm just like, I even wrote an article. You can Google it. You can search it. It's on Ari's take. I said, yeah. dear indie distributors, stop punishing your artists. It's not their fault because it was happening so frequently. And artists would come to me and they're like, my album just got removed. All my royalties are being blocked. I, I you spent $5,000 on a release campaign on marketing and now everything is removed from me and I can't get it back. And what should I do? I was just like, I. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what to yeah, tell you so what tough. to do. <laughs> you know, it's I tough. Know. Yeah. It's, it's a really tough problem. I hear you. Yeah. So, all right. You can, you mentioned the royalty pool a few times. Um, can you just break down quickly how uh, royalties work on Spotify? Uh, and what do you mean by the royalty pool? Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, Spotify uh, gets money uh, in two ways for, for music from listeners subscription fees for, for Spotify premium, uh, and then advertising revenue, um, that, uh, is for audio ads on our free tier, uh, listeners mm-hmm. on Spotify can this free, and then you can upgrade to, to premium. Um, the majority of our revenue comes from premium subscription fees. Mm-hmm. Uh, all that money we kind of, um, uh, um, pull up, uh, Spotify, um, like all the streaming services keeps about a third of, um, that money that comes in and, and two thirds mm-hmm. is going back to, rights holders um, on the recording and the publishing side. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is, um, uh, last year we paid out about $7 billion, a little over $7 billion in um, royalties to, to rights holders. That was the, mm-hmm. the most of um, uh, any retailer in one year um, in history. So a, a ton of money going out. It is um, split up between uh, recording and, and publishing, as you know, and it's, it's allocated based on a uh, stream share. So there's uh, no fixed uh, per stream rate on on our um, service or any other. Um, I know you talk about uh, that a lot. Um, mm-hmm. It is based on um, uh, what we call stream share. So if um, I'll kind of oversimplify uh, mm-hmm. a bit here because um, uh, it gets complicated. But in general, you know, each month if there's you know uh, a million, um, there's a hundred streams on on Spotify, and and you got one of them. Um, you know, for every hundred, you got one stream you're going to get 1% of, uh, of that kind of total royalty pool. And so, okay. you know, each month we're allocating total streams, um, you know, we'll separate the premium pool from the free pool and mm-hmm. um, allocate it out based on stream share. 
Um, and every major streaming service works that way. Um, it's based on stream share. So, um, well, let me let me yeah. uh, break that down a little bit. Uh, a few questions about that because um, do artists? Do, okay, does it matter? Does artists stream share rate change based on the distributor or label that they go through? Uh, Is it different? The stream, the stream share? No, no, no. Um, so let me let me say one one Ari Herstan stream who uh, distributed it through DistroKid, is that going to be the same amount as uh, one Harry Styles stream that was distributed through Universal or something? Uh, like, you had, like, you know, the same stream share. Identical. Um, it's the same person. It's, it's you listening on your premium Spotify account from New York. Uh, you listen to Harry Styles first, and then you listen to me. I happen to go through DistroKid. Harry Styles happen to go through a major label. Are we going to get the exact same payment from Sam's uh, stream? Uh, great question. I wish I uh, knew licensing at the the level required to answer that. Largely, yeah, stream share, stream share. Um, and so royalty pool will be um, kind of allocated based on the percentage of kind of the total streams you have in that period with whatever. I thought major label on. artists got paid more because they were able to negotiate higher rates uh, than the indie distributors could with Spotify but, for per stream. I, t I, uh, um, I, I'm sure I only understand about 1% of uh, all the stuff that goes in, into licensing on platform. Definitely, um, okay. uh, a, you know, big focus for, for us. And um, I know you've kind of covered our loud and clear um, mm -hmm. kind of transparency, uh, transparency report we do around royalties. Uh, every year we just did it for the second year. And um, we're really focused on, um, you know, can we create a, as much financial opportunity as possible for artists, no matter right, right. which so path they, they here, decide to here's go? A, yeah. yeah, here's a different question because like I, loud and clear is great. And, and, and yeah, like yeah. you said, it's paid $7 billion and I've covered it extensively and you're totally right. So it's like, you know, Spotify pays out a lot. You keep only a third of the money, which I think, think a lot of people understand. You and Apple are virtually keeping the same amount uh, of the commission. So you get, you know, Spotify does get a bad rap. Why don't you then move to a user centric payment model, which means you spend ten dollars uh, the a month on your subscription this month, and you only listen to me uh, this month. Let's just say you only listen to me, so I get all ten of those dollars less Spotify's commission of of a third. So I would get you know uh, about seven bucks, you know, or so, just just um, under that. Uh, seven dollars versus if you listen to me, you know, a thousand streams, which would equal, you know, a few, you know, cents yeah, there. Yes. Because then also, if you move to user centric payment, not only uh, would artists, in my mind, especially with the super fans, get paid more. Bots wouldn't be a thing anymore. Period. There would be no more bots existing because it would just not be financially. Uh, viable for anyone to run a bot service because whoever they're listening to, like that's what the money that they're getting. So why not just change the payment model from this royalty pool that you talk about that is so opaque and some art distributors get paid more than others and labels are getting paid then you can't break it down. There's no per stream rate. It's all based on this money here. Why not just say like all the artists that you listen to this month are going to get part of your subscription fee or ad revenue fee? Yeah, user user centric model is really interesting. We've uh we've tried to do our part in contributing to the conversation, and mm -hmm. um, you know, for a streaming service, ours or, or any other, um, you're kind of paying out the same amount to to rights holders either way. You know, the seven billion dollars for us per year, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and so you know, in some ways, the streaming service is is neutral on it. It's about rights holders agreeing that's the way they want money to be allocated, and so you know, we've said publicly um, for a while now. You know, we're willing to to switch to a user centric model um, if that's what artists and songwriters and and rights holders uh, want to do. And we can't really make that decision on our own because of um, all the complexity across all the rights holders that have to to kind of agree to it. And so, um, you know, it requires that broad industry alignment um, mm. uh, to make that change. That said, um, you know, the research uh, we've seen from from third parties to date. Um, mm -hmm. suggests a shift to user centric payments, you know, might not benefit artists as much as, you know, I and I think a lot of people were were originally hoping um, ourselves and a few other services um, contributed a bunch of data to a French study you might have seen with the um, National Music Center and they found kind of uh, for artists outside the top 10,000 um, know, user centric model would actually only change payouts by, you know, a few euros per per year. Um, that said, you know, 
uh, I totally agree with you. There's something really interesting um, for the listener side and the fan side of, you know, knowing that the money's going um, uh, precisely to, to the artists that you're listening to. Um, so I think it's a, a unique, you know, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No. Yeah. I mean, if, if the industry um, and, you know, uh, decides that's what they want to do, um, you know, we've said we're open to it um, for us at Spotify for artists, you know, given that we can't uh, kind of make that change unilaterally we're that's why we're really focused on building these new revenue streams for artists. We mm. are paying out, um, uh, you know, the most in the industry and we want to keep growing uh, streaming royalties. But if we're thinking about, you know, big swings we can take and the industry can take, um, you know, how can we power new digital revenue streams for artists? How can we power more merch sales through streaming? How can we uh, power more ticket sales? Um, how to find even more revenue streams for artists? Um, okay. uh, it's something we're really excited about. So you're saying it would take a unanimous agreement from every label and every distributor out there? Uh, maybe, maybe not unanimous, but uh, okay. um, certainly broad industry alignment. Got it. Um, when are you going to enhance credits? Uh, right now, Spotify has producer and songwriter credits, but what about the drummer that played on my record or the mixing engineer who's brilliant? When is he going to get his due? Or the, the mastering uh, engineer, when is she going to get her due? Uh, where, where, why, why, won't you, why won't you highlight these people in the credit section? That's, I, uh, I love that question. Um, yeah, I want us to have richer, richer credits due. Um, I, I, mm -hmm. I hope it's uh, something like at some point that we've got... Um, uh, we've been investing a ton on uh, songwriter and producer credits, especially. Yep. Um, and hopefully you've seen um, kind of some of the new features we launched last year or two uh, there. We just, um, uh, we've been rolling out songwriter pages. So not only do you get mm -hmm. uh, a credit when someone clicks into the song credits on Spotify, they'll see who wrote it, who produced it, a bunch of other stuff. Um, for those with a songwriter page, you can click on it and it takes you to um, a site that lists uh, all the songs you've uh, written or produced that lists your top collaborators. You can choose a mm -hmm. featured song um, through your publisher. Those come with a written by playlist, which is kind of a way for listeners and potential collaborators to listen to all the music that you've kind of wrote or produced. Um, uh, we've seen um, a ton of listener engagement on it, which is awesome. I think there's a huge movement towards uh, writers and producers um, who aren't recording artists uh, building their yeah. own fan bases um, on streaming services and on social media. So we've been investing a ton in kind of enhanced credits in, in that space. I, I'd love to see kind of richer credits do um, to get to the types of uh, uh, instrumental that we're talking about. I, t I don't, um, but you th you've got my support on it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. You have all the information. Uh, I'm telling you, all the like it. My, all my credits are on Pandora and Tidal. I'll just put it out there. Uh, yeah. They're not on Spotify. So, like, you know, my drummer's getting the love on Pandora and on Tidal, not getting any love from Spotify. So, it would be really awesome to enhance the credits. Same with not just pop and rock, you know, uh, classical. That's a really tough one. I don't know yeah. if you guys pay attention to classical a lot, but like, if you search, you know, the Rachmaninoff concerto, it's different from like, it, it, with composers, mm. it's really it's really different, and and uh, in terms of and same with like jazz, it's just like uh, I want to know all the records that Herbie Hancock played on, not the ones where it's just a Herbie Hancock record. But what about the Miles Davis records that Herbie Hancock was playing keys on? I would love if I could have that information and it was synced. So I'm just like pull up every song that Herbie Hancock played on, or like I want to hear the Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto Number no. Three, but it's the Anna. Um, the Anna Fedorova version, and so if I search Anna Fedorova, I'm not going to get all the Rachmaninoff. Do you know? Do you know what I'm saying here? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so no plans to enhance that or make that cleaner. That, nothing I can share, but you, Got it. credits, uh, credits, metadata definitely is like near to dear to, to all of our hearts. I, I hope we can okay. have you richer credits on, on platform soon. I wish sure. I had news to share with you right now. Okay, no worries, uh, no worries. I but appreciate I, that. I share your passion and I, and I love it. Love it. Okay. Um, and then finally, um, these promotional, um, other promotional tools that you've mentioned, um, there, so for instance, like, um, marquee, like you were talking about earlier, yeah. where when you open, um, the app and a, and a album pops up and say, Hey, do you want to listen to the new Ari Hurston record? Tap here. Um, explain how that works. I know I've saw my Spotify virus. There's the campaigns tab. I could set up a campaign yeah. for this. Um, can you talk a little bit about how that works and how those things kind of work? Yeah, definitely. We've got, um, you know, music marketing is uh, so challenging, especially for artists uh, doing it themselves. And so 
we've tried to make Marquee the kind of most intuitive um, and hopefully uh, um, a really effective way to promote um, a new release. What you do is you go into the campaigns tab. If you have a new release coming up uh, within seven days, or you can do it 14 days post release, mm. um, you uh, uh, choose release. Um, you can target um, listeners based on um, their listening history on Spotify. So you could get mm -hmm. you know recently interested listeners who just heard you for the first time, lapsed listeners who um, uh, used to listen to you more than six months ago but haven't recently. Uh, casual listeners who have listened to you more passively, but you want to turn them into active fans, right? The types of targeting that's um, really hard to to do on on you know Facebook ads or Google ads or you know yeah. the sorts of services that that a lot of artists are using. Um, mm -hmm. And you can you can set a budget, uh, you know, for every kind of click you get of that um, you know recommendation that pops up right when the listener opens the app. Um, uh, um, they kind of go straight into your album, and then we provide a bunch of reporting about. Um, you know, how many clicks did you get? How many unique listeners did you get? What was the streams per listener? What was the intent rate? Um, mm -hmm. And so if you think of, you know, uh, there's a, a YouTuber I like watching um, uh, who just focuses on digital marketing for artists, um, uh, Andrew Southworth, uh, Southworth okay. is his name. I don't know if you know him. Shout mm -hmm. out to him. And, yeah. you know, he has like a, um, you know, 20 video playlist on um, really awesome tips on how to, do Facebook and Google ads for um, to drive Spotify streams or, or drive uh, streams on streaming. And yep. for Marquee, it's, you know, one video. Uh, you know, if you think of right. an artist trying to hack together Facebook ads and, and Google ads, you're, you're reaching listeners when they are on their social feed and they're seeing pictures from friends and brands and, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. And you're trying to kind of get into that conversation. Uh, you are targeting them based on you know, the best metrics you can pull together to build your custom audience, but um, that targeting you kind of have to hack together. It's not based on listening history. And then your reporting will be about, you know, how well that creative performed, but you're not going to mm -hmm. get that data on, you know, did it drive listening, the thing that you're, you're doing a marketing campaign to try to drive. And so uh -huh. when we're thinking about marquee, we're trying to make it, you know, as easy as possible. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's uh, you know, one Andrew Southworth uh, video to explain how to use it, target based on um, listening history. Uh, reach listeners right when they're deciding what to listen to rather than when uh -huh. they're on, you know, a social feed or, you sure. know, a Google product. And then you get reporting about um, what you're really trying to drive, which is how'd that find, how do you drive fandom? How do you turn listeners into fans? How do you kind of, uh, you know, find a, a, a rich new audience for, mm. um, uh, for the, for the track, for the, for the album that you just released. Um, how much so, does that cost? Uh, price varies based on the market. Um, it's uh, 50 cents a click in, in the U S um, mm -hmm. You can, um, I think we're live in 13, 14 markets now. And so okay. um, it'll kind of be based on the market. But, uh, well, you know. Yeah. That, so 50 cents a click. Now, let me tell you, I've done a lot of uh, work and I we have a course on running ads on, you know, Facebook, Instagram story ads. And like it's taught by Lucidius, who he's got over 200 million Spotify streams, zero Spotify editorial, mind you, uh, just based on running the ads on, you know, Facebook and Instagram sending people to Spotify. So yeah. it does work. Now, now our data and what we look with our, you know, thousands of students at this point um, is it's about five to 10 cents per click from Instagram stories to Spotify. It's a hard thing to say, go, you, and I totally get it. Whereas like once you're already yeah. on Spotify, the friction, it's much less friction. And, and the data, right, right. man, I would love to get that back in Spotify data. But like it's a lot, like five to ten times more expensive to run a marquee ad, and also if I'm thinking of like fifty cents a click, let's th it, that would take each user. I'm gonna do real quick math here. It would take me yep. each click 150 or so streams of that one user that clicked for fifty cents to me to to break even on that user. What's a benefit of using marquee when it's fifty cents per click? It's so much more expensive than Instagram, which you touched on a little bit. But um, fifty yeah, cents yeah. per click, and yeah, the the money that I'm going to get in return is not going to reach that. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're um, using a kind of non music platform for your ads, you're getting a ton of drop off when someone's clicking sure. from a Instagram story. You know, it's a, a really small percentage you're going to get to to click through from Instagram, ready to listen to music at that moment. Sure. You know, maybe they go through. To, you know your um, link fire or you know some sub page mm -hmm. then to the streaming service um, mm -hmm. and also it's about you know what type of listener are you getting in there um, a lot of uh, artists and teams 
you know, uh, there's some really smart and great ways to build, you know, the audiences that you're going to target there. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of ways you can get the cost per click down um, if you're kind of not as concerned with the quality of the listener that you're you're bringing in. And sure. um, it all is based on, you know, how are you actually going to track how your spend on another platform is driving streams and actions given, sure. um, you, know, uh, you know, Facebook or Google or, or any service, Twitter isn't going to provide that reporting. So mm -hmm. for us, it's, you know, um, we have really tight targeting. So you're getting um, the kind of most likely listeners you can target based on, you know, all the segments I talked about. Yeah. Uh, we have, you know, pretty uh, crazy click through rates. Um, you know, we're talking like 20% click through rate. Um, oh, wow. when people see a marquee and, um, you know, on digital platforms, you know, like 1%, um, uh, you know, might mm -hmm. be strong, but, um, so, you know, often you talk about huge multiples, increase click through rate targeting is a lot better and you actually can measure your ROI for it. So, um, you know, if you're just trying to optimize you, no, for, let's start there. How do you measure your ROI on marquee? Uh-huh. With Marquee. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we show um, a bunch of reporting right in Spotify for artists. So you go to that campaigns tab, you you buy it. We recommend waiting at least two weeks after your campaign to sure. see you know all the downstream. And you're going to get um, all the listing data based just on people who went through your Marquee. So you'll see mm. uh, for the release itself that you're promoting, you'll get uh, unique listeners, streams per listener, intent rate, which is a really key one because it shows listeners are going to be listening again. And we'll also show you metrics on... Um, how it kind of led to a halo effect for all your other um, releases. So often you'll see, oh. you know, you get someone in there for your new EP, your new single, that reminds them that they want to listen to your full catalog. So we'll show reporting of those marquee listeners. They went mm -hmm. on to listen to um, all your other stuff as well. Um, cool. And so, uh, you know, you can get a full picture of, you know, the campaign you're doing is there to try to, you know, find new fans for your music and get, 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 you, get you out there. And mm -hmm. you can kind of jump in there and see all the metrics to see, um, how many streams for listening you're getting, how many new fans you found. Um, yeah. And yeah, the numbers have been uh, um, really impressive so far. Now, I, I, let me ask this a different way. Um, the benefit of using a marquee, I, I would imagine that I would like to use that to sure engage my current fans that have, you know, re-engage them. I haven't been listening for six months or something like that, like you said, which is awesome. But yeah. more so for me, I'm thinking I want to trigger some more algorithmic playlists and potentially some editorial. Have you seen within the data that that can help do that? Marquee can help that effort. Uh, definitely no impact on, on editorial. Um, okay. uh, um, there's definitely a, kind of a, a bright line there. Um, algorithmic, maybe I haven't I haven't seen the data, but um, you know, as we talked about, the you know signals that our algorithms take in are all about you know um, the Spotify system. Uh, showing the listeners are loving your track and us getting better and better data on what types of listeners um, mm -hmm. are loving your track. And so, okay. you know, any marketing program you do, whether it's marquee or, you know, Facebook ads, Google ads, any sort mm -hmm. of marketing service, if you're finding real new fans of your music, that'll show up in the data. So um, there's mm -hmm. no benefit of a new fan found from marquee versus a new fan for some other service. Um, we think marquee is a really effective way to find um, people who are going to love your music and get them into your new release. Um, sure. But uh, yeah, any kind of successful marketing program you're doing is going to um, hopefully find people who are going to, you know, love your song, add it to their mm -hmm. personal playlist, like it, listen to it again. Um, and that gives our system even more data about the types of folks you should recommend it to. What about discovery mode? I heard a, I've been hearing a lot about discovery mode over the last like, I don't know, year or so, which is like the one where um, you can accept a lower uh <laughs> stream rate and you'll to get your song recommended a little bit more frequently in like radio or after somebody finishes listening to a playlist or an album or something it'll just be recommended to them in exchange the artist agrees to take a lower royalty payout is that correct uh not quite uh, okay. um uh it, it's in discovery modes in um uh early testing we're in a pilot with um okay. a bunch of distributors um and artists okay. and it's really trying to speak to um, like just the problem uh, we hear from artists all the time about um, personalized recommendations on Spotify. Um, mm. uh, it's really kind of just that, you know just the question you asked earlier. What do I do if I want to um, kind of get in there right now? Yeah. Our algorithms are fully just based on listener data. We can't get that artist input um, uh, to kind of help understand which tracks are the biggest priority um, for you. Which tracks do you really want to get out there? Um, mm right now. So we've been in a pilot stage for um, 
uh, a bit now where we're working with um, a bunch of artists and distributors um, kind of across all different career stages. And um, yeah, the way it works is you can kind of let us know, you can turn on discovery mode for the songs mm -hmm. that are a priority to you. It adds one additional signal to um, our algorithm that this song is really important to you. You really want to get it out there in radio and autoplay. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, um, we kind of use that signal to um, increase its likelihood to get recommended um, in that part of Spotify. And uh, currently we've been charging um, uh, a commission. So, um, you know, same royalty payment, but based on the number of listeners uh, and streams that you're getting in radio and autoplay, um, uh, Spotify will, you know, charge a commission, and we've been working with uh, distributors to understand the the way that makes the most sense. Um, so you charge a that. bigger commission uh, than the third that you do take already, than the thirty three percent that you already take. You're taking more of a commission. But we're still working. We're in this pilot okay. stage gotcha. um, where we're kind of uh, really trying to make sure that it's uh, um, you know, that's as fair as possible to, to artists. The the real benefit that. Um, we hope this kind of commission model would have would be, mm -hmm. um, you know, rather than needing a huge cash budget um, upfront, you know, um, to uh, um, to use a service um, with a commission, we kind of would take a commission from the streams that the service finds you. So only when um, Discovery Mode is helping you find new listeners, um, mm -hmm. uh, only then would you know the, the commission be be charged, and there's no upfront budget um, that's required. Um, I mean, so we're, we're really at... excited about. Oh, it. Sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, um, and uh, definitely um, uh, um, a key key part of discovery mode is um, mm -hmm. a crazy amount of reporting that we provide to, to art, the artists and their team. So cool. um, you'll find out exactly um, you know how many listeners uh, um, you found through discovery mode. What was their intent rate? Did they go on to listen to you outside of um, you know radio and these discovery mode sessions um, uh, where it'd be kind of a commission free. Uh, experience because yeah. you found these new fans um uh and then you can decide at any point you would you know turn discovery mode off um mm -hmm. uh anytime you want turn it on for the songs where you want to and and get that reporting kind of across the board uh so you can make smart decisions about when to use it but yeah again we're, we're in this early pilot stage okay. uh still and um uh yeah ho hopefully we'll have some news soon why not give that service to artists for free? Uh, Pandora does that. They have, with the Pandora amp, they have the ability for artists to feature songs uh, for free, and they get paid a full rate on their on their royalties. Yeah, I don't, I don't know much about um, Pandora amp, uh, but mm -hmm. you know, definitely uh, a huge portion of um, the discovery you're going to get on Spotify. Uh, are going to be, you know, pitching for playlists uh, for free, all the kind of personalized recommendations, all the discovery that you're getting mm -hmm. on Spotify. For a lot of these tools, you know, we've talked about um, the ecosystem of, of paid products um, for promotion mm -hmm. that uh, artists are using, that labels are using. Um, and we hope we can um, build, you know, more effective and, and smarter ways to, to use their budget. Obviously, for, mm -hmm. for artists, the, the money coming in is um, super important. And, um, we're really proud of the kind of royalty checks going out there, yeah. but the uh, money going out too is um, uh, critical. And if we can kind of uh, help build marketing programs that let labels, let artists um, kind of spend their money smarter, have more measurable outcomes, mm -hmm. uh, we think that's a good thing and um, avoid people having to use uh, um, services that, that, that don't and provide the reporting so artists can decide for themselves. Amazing. Cool. Well, Sam, thank you so much for staying on so long with me and answering all my questions and all uh, the audience's questions that I compiled. I really appreciate the candor. I appreciate the transparency. I appreciate you sitting in the hot chair and not running away <laughs> when I when I pressed you a bunch. So thank you very much. Um, I have one final question that I ask everybody who comes on the show. What does it mean to you to make it in the new music business? Uh, was was so fun being here. Thanks for having me. Um, of course. Uh, yeah, I love that question. Always, um, always curious what, what people answer. And um, uh, uh, I, I love listening to your show. Uh, for me, you know, it's like truly um, uh, whether you're an artist or someone who's kind of working to support artists, it's getting to um, uh, do the thing you love full time without having to, you know, make compromises or, um, uh, um, you know, can give 100% of yourself to that. I started my career working in Pepsi uh, in marketing uh, a long time ago and was kind of finding ways to work in music. We would like do a bunch of music marketing and that sort of thing. And I thought, 
all right, well, this is the way I'll get to work in music uh, mm -hmm. since I'm not an artist <laughs> myself. Um, yeah. And it's crazy to me to, to wake up every day and, um, uh, you know, realize I get to, you know, think about helping artists build their careers all day. That's a, that's an awesome privilege and is super fun. And when I get to talk to artists who get to, um, uh, you know, quit their day, jo day, day job and, and go full time cause of streaming or cause of some milestone in their career. Um, yeah. I'm sure you hear that all the time. I get to hear that all the time and, um, mm -hmm. same sort of feeling. It's a, an awesome moment. Amazing. Sam Dubov, thank you so much. It's great. So fun. Great chatting. Today's episode was edited by Maxton Hunter, theme music by Brassroots District, and produced by all the great people at Ari's Take.